Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's. It is the Sunday of the Passion and Palm Sunday, and we're looking forward very much to the Passion Play in our service this morning. It's also a service of spiritual communion. But we begin our service this morning with our liturgy of the palms, and then we will go on a procession. And we hope you join in with that with your palms and uh, be part of that virtually. So thank you so much for being here this morning. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the Twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may evermore more hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen. Blah. 
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Blessed Palm Sunday to each and every one of you, and welcome to St. Luke's Christian Education Intergenerational Passion Play. Before we begin, I'd like to take just a few moments to tell you how our Passion Play came to be. Our first play took place in 2014 in the basement. It was a Sunday school project. And at that time, Christy Keller was teaching our primary class up here in the room adjacent to the Children's Chapel. Rose Reed was teaching our senior high Sunday school class in the first basement classroom. And Cheryl Ball and I were teaching the intermediate Sunday school class in the second basement classroom. We had seven regular students that were very enthusiastic about Sunday school and very enthusiastic about theater. And we decided we would spend all of Lent studying Holy Week in segments. And then we would put it together at the end in a play and invite our parents downstairs to see it. Well, that's exactly what happened. And uh, at the end of our play, our parents were very impressed and really asked us to please repeat the play on Easter Sunday during Sunday school hour so that they could invite grandparents to come and join us as well. And that is what we did. That's the only year we've done the play twice. Um, the next year, uh, grandparents again joined us and uh, we got word from several that the stairs were just too hard for them to do. So please move our passion play upstairs. And we did that. In 2016, it was the first time that the whole parish hall became Jerusalem. We've done the passion play here every year since, except for two years. In 2018, Wayne and I got to spend 10 days of March in the Holy Land, and we were there for Passion Sunday. Um, and last year, on March 15th, the house went dark. We have not had Sunday School live since then, and but we've not missed Sunday School since then either. We Zoom Sunday School every week, and last week, we did a virtual dress rehearsal with no one here. So this is something brand new. We are bringing in our families one at a time. There's one scene where we will have two families, one on each side of the parish hall. But other than that, we're doing each family individually. And our wonderful tech team is putting this all together for us and saving it for you to watch at any time. The way we usually start is to put ourselves in a quiet place and think about what it would be like to actually be in Jerusalem at that time. All the Jews that could make it to Jerusalem came for three holy festivals every year. This one is Passover. Jesus has been traveling all over uh, the Holy Land with his disciples. They've been in Bethany 
where he did his last miracle, raising Lazarus from the dead. He leaves Mary, Martha, and Lazarus and travels with his 12 disciples to Jerusalem. It's a glorious sunny day. The crowds have been getting larger and larger and larger that are following him. And he enters in a spectacular pageant. Then we know that the days turn very dark. As a matter of fact, much of what happens during Holy Week happens under cover of darkness. We don't see the bright sunshine again until Easter Day. And we are going to take a walk of this week with you. So I'm going to light my candle. ask you to be mindful of what takes place out in the bright light in front of everyone and what takes place under cover of darkness. It is now Palm Sunday. Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Jesus told two disciples to bring him a donkey. He told them where to find it. Jesus rode the donkey to Jerusalem. A big crowd welcomed him. People waved palm branches and put them on the road in front of Jesus. They shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel. Now there were leaders in Jerusalem who did not like Jesus. They saw how many people were following him and they were angry about it. These leaders wanted to find someone close to Jesus who would help them arrest him. Judas went to the Jewish leaders and asked, how much money will you give me if I tell you where and when you can catch Jesus? The religious leaders paid Judas 30 pieces of silver. Finally, it was time to begin preparing for the Passover meal. Long ago, God's people were living as slaves in Egypt. God sent Moses to be their leader and to lead them out of Egypt into a land of their own. God sent the angel of death to the homes of the Egyptians, but the angel of death passed over the homes of the people of God. Moses told them how to prepare a Passover meal. Moses gave them clear instructions about what they should eat and how they should cook it. These instructions were for that night and for the annual celebration each year afterward. Jewish families still gather every year for a Passover meal. 
families meet to eat roast lamb with bitter tasting herbs and bread made without yeast. Every part of the meal has special meaning and the children in the family are told about God's wonderful goodness to his own people when they were slaves in Egypt. Jesus planned to share his last Passover meal with his disciples. Go and get the Passover meal ready, he told Peter and John. He told them where to go. Ask the owner of the house to show you the room he promised to lend us. It will be a big upstairs room. Get our meal ready there. Jesus knew that his enemies were looking for him. It was important that he should have a safe, private place where he could enjoy his last supper with his friends. He still had many things to tell them before he was taken away from them. All 12 of Jesus' disciples were at the Passover feast. There was Peter, and his brother Andrew. There was John, and James, the sons of Zebedee. Philip, Bartholomew. Thomas. Matthew.
James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon. and Judas Iscariot. All of the disciples were different. Some had more faith than others, but they were all loyal to Jesus, all but one. Jesus knew which disciple was going to turn against him. Jesus had shown his friends how to love and serve one another. Jesus told them, one of you will turn against me tonight. His disciples were shocked. We would never do that. Who will turn against you, John asked. The one I give this piece of bread to. He handed it to Judas and said, Do what you must. And Judas left quickly. Then Jesus did something else. He changed the old Passover into a supper with special meaning for his followers. He picked up a loaf of bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces. He gave the bread to his disciples to eat. Jesus said, This bread is my body. Every time you do this, think of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine and blessed it. He gave it to the disciples to drink. This is my blood. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. My blood will be the seal of God's new covenant, which he is going to make with people of every nation. After supper, Jesus talked to his disciples for a long time. He wanted to prepare them for what was going to happen that very night. When Jesus was finished talking to them, they all left the safety of the quiet, friendly room.
They walked to the Mount of Olives. They went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter, James, and John walked close to Jesus. Soon, Jesus went a little way from them to pray. His friends could see that he was shaken with distress and grief. But in spite of Jesus' need for them, the three friends were so tired that they fell asleep. Twice, Jesus woke them. But when he began to pray, they dozed off again. Jesus prayed, Please, Father, don't let me go through the terrible suffering that lies ahead. However, if it is your will, I am ready to give my life so that all people who trust in me will be saved from their sins. Soon, Jesus woke the disciples a third time. Here comes the one who has betrayed me to my enemies. Judas greeted Jesus with a kiss. The armed guards rushed up and seized Jesus. Peter was furious. He pulled out his sword and cut off the ear of Malchus, one of the high priest's servants. Put away your sword, Peter. I could call on armies of angels to fight for me, but I am ready to give up my life according to God's plan. Then Jesus gently touched the wounded ear and made it whole. Jesus was going to allow himself to be taken prisoner. In panic and despair, all the disciples ran away. And the armed guards led their unresisting prisoner away. They took Jesus to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. Although it was nighttime, the Jewish council decided to meet at once and put Jesus on trial. All night long, Jesus stood before the council, listening to the false charges they made. They could prove nothing against Jesus. Finally, the high priest challenged Jesus directly. Tell me on an oath, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus replied, I am. That settles the matter. The prisoner claims to be divine. He deserves to die, said the high priest. But only Pilate, the Roman governor, could pass the death sentence. These religious leaders must now convince him that Jesus had committed crimes worthy of death by Roman law. Early in the morning, Jesus was taken in chains before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Jesus' enemies told the governor, this man says he is king of the Jews. He is making people turn against the emperor. He should be put to death. Pilate was certain that the Jewish leaders had trumped up these charges. Also, other Jewish leaders were in the streets trying to stir up an angry mob and cause a riot. Pilate asked Jesus, What do you have to say for yourself? Are you guilty? Jesus did not say anything. The governor was amazed that Jesus did not defend himself. First, 
Pilate tried to reason with the crowd, saying, This man is completely innocent. He does not deserve to die. Then Pilate tried another way out. It is Passover time. I shall set a prisoner free as part of the celebrations. Let me set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders convinced the crowd to chant, Crucify Jesus! Release Barabbas! Crucify Jesus! Release Barabbas! Pilate was at his wit's end. If the crowd rioted, he might lose his job. He did not dare release Jesus now, even though Roman justice declared him innocent. He decided to wash his hands of the whole matter and hand Jesus over to be put to death by crucifixion, as the mob insisted. Pilate wrote a sign. Then he put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The sign was written in the Jewish language, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish priest said to Pilate, Don't write King of the Jews. Instead, write, This man said, I am King of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. At last, he let his soldiers take Jesus away. The soldiers put a red robe on Jesus and a crown of thorns. They made fun of the king. Then they took the robe off and beat him with whips. Soon it was time for the prisoner to be taken to the place of execution. They made him carry the big wooden cross. They took him outside the city gates to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. There they nailed Jesus to the cross. They put two other men on crosses. One on each side of Jesus, with Jesus in the middle. This was how Romans punished people who had committed bad crimes. At noon, the sky turned dark, and it stayed that way until three o'clock. At that time, 
Jesus cried out, Father, I put myself in your hands, and then he died. A crowd of Jesus' friends were watching everything from a distance. After they had seen the terrible sight, they felt brokenhearted and went home. One of the people who saw Jesus die on the cross was a rich man named Joseph. He was from a town of Arimathea in Judea. Joseph was honest and brave. He was a temple leader, but he did not agree with the ones who had turned Jesus over to the Romans. He had heard Jesus' teachings and believed in what he said. Joseph was sad. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus so he could bury it. Nicodemus went with Joseph. These two men took the body down from the cross. They wrapped it in fine linen cloth Then they put him in a cave that was a tomb in Joseph's garden. They had to hurry because it was almost sundown and the Sabbath would begin. They sealed it shut with a large round stone. Soldiers were sent to guard the tomb. Saturday was the Sabbath. It was against the Jewish law to bury anyone on the Sabbath, so they had to wait until Sunday for the women to finish the final burial preparations. Three days later, on Sunday, the earth shook. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and pushed the stone away from the tomb.
When the soldiers saw the angel, they fell to the ground. Mary was walking to the tomb with some of the other women. They saw the angel who said, Do not be afraid. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Go and tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus is alive. On their way, the women saw Jesus. They fell to their knees and worshipped him. Jesus smiled and said, Go tell the others that I will see them in Galilee. So Mary ran to tell the disciples. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Prayers of the People, the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday. Our Lord comes to us humbly, riding a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians hear and share the word of God as true disciples, we pray, Lord, Hear our prayer. That all the ends of the earth receive the words of the King of Peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of church and of state prefer humble service to empty power, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw strength from the name above every other name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again be ready and joyful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the Church of Ireland. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, pray for the people of China, Hong Kong, and Macau. In the Kansas cycle of prayer, pray for the students and the faculty of the Bishop Kemper School for Ministry. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those serving in the armed forces, Devin Allen, Murphy Bright, Ben Dival, Coy Goodman, Michael Green, Harvey Hazelton, Drew Honeycutt, Benjamin Karpinski, Patrick McInerney, Alex Shaw, 
Jose Teo, Brian Weichel, Colin Kelly, Macaulay Garten, Frank Bedner, Grant Bedner, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For health and strength, Tony Allen, Marcia Streepy, Bob Mossman, Charlene Lassiter, Candace Harvey, Anthony Straker, Susie, Lindsay, Trevor, and Michael Knobel, Ruth Knobel, Fred Kignendorf, Deanne and Kelly, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For birthdays, Jim Darnell, Ellis Kinnigendorf, Reverend Jonathan Bryce, Claudia Rick Hubbard, Jim Kelly, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our creator, show your sons and daughters the way to freedom through the gentle obedience of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant our petitions as we seek to follow him. We pray in his name, Christ the Lord. Amen. We want to wish our birthday folk a wonderful birthday, and we pray you have a great day uh, this week, and uh, we are thinking of you, and we hope you get everything that you wish for. Let's pray our birthday prayer together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God. Set me free, rocks keep silent. I'm gonna shout in victory. 
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with, the, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in, for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and for ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse me and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Saviour. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you so much for worshipping with us this morning. It's been wonderful to be here. And we want to thank the people who were involved in our Sunday School Passion Play. And we want to thank you for all your hard work, for the cast of uh, Millions and the people that were involved and the families. We thank you so much for Dennis and Tom and the technical team. Thank you again to Debbie Fowler for all her hard work bringing everything together and coordinating the whole event. It's absolutely wonderful and we're so proud that we're able to do this uh, in times of COVID and do such a wonderful job with, uh, with uh, the things that we have available to us to do it with. So thank you again to all of you. It's just been really, really wonderful. On Easter Sunday, we will gather for in-person outdoor worship and uh, St. Luke's is so fortunate to be seated, situated right next to a lovely green open space. So we all look forward to gathering safely together and sharing communion with each other on that uh, blessed Easter day. So please do join us. Uh, come along, bring a chair and uh, come in your cars and we will make sure that you are safely uh, situated and we will have a wonderful service. So thank you so much. Then after the uh, service, we will have our uh, noonday coffee hour, our coffee hour, so please do come along to that at 11.30, and that will be excellent. We're going to be making palm crosses and have a demonstration on how to do that, and also there will be a competition, I think, to see who can create the smallest palm cross. I think that's a tradition that I'm really looking forward to uh, Sunday in our coffee hour. So join us then, please. Please keep connecting safely with your vines and branches and uh, 
do join us in our coffee hour on Zoom after this service. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>